What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome back to the 56 jailbreak update video and this is the one we've been waiting on. So today we're going to be talking all about the iOS 11.3.1 exploit that was just released as well as when we can expect the actual full jailbreak to get released. And I'm hoping this video will help clear up a lot of confusion and answer some of the questions that you may be having. All right, so just as I announced in my last two jailbreak update videos, Ian Beer did come through and release two exploits for iOS 11.3.1 tonight. So yes, Ian Beer did release two iOS 11.3.1 exploits today, both of which were patched in iOS 11.3.1. And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but the main difference between the two exploits is that one requires a paid developer account to compile the exploit and the other does not. So let's just get to the nitty gritty details. Here's what Ian Beer tweeted out tonight. iOS 11.4 patched the kernel memory corruption bugs are reported on in two distinct areas, MPTCP and VFS. My exploit for the MPTCP bug is here. And then there is a link right there. Please read the readme. It requires an Apple developer certificate. And you can see here on the site, all the code required as expected. Of course, we do have the readme there which does in fact show that we do need a paid apple developer account he then followed that up by saying that this is the same bug as already publicly documented from the patch by elvin derb and exploited by jaker blom see john's repo here and this link takes you to the github page for a quote low effort ios 11.3.1 jailbreak and you can see it was tested only on the iphone 10 and requires siri to be disabled and ian beer continued with this the vfs bug doesn't require an apple developer cert but is considerably harder to exploit you get to write eight null bytes off of the end of calic 16 buffer it's sufficiently hard to exploit that it's worth trying just to demonstrate that such issues are reliably exploitable and this is the vfs bug which is the second exploit he released and as he said it is much harder to exploit now, i'm sure some of you guys got worried when you read about this whole developer account and that this one's going to be a lot harder to exploit and things like that but i do not see this being a big roadblock for the jailbreak sure it may take a little bit longer it's not going to take just a couple hours like some people speculated but i don't think it's going to take anything like months to get achieved it's not just a simple plug and play like some people expected. Anyways, Ian Beer continued with, see example, the poison null byte 2014 by Scary Beasts. And then he posts the link right here. But it takes time. The MPTCP exploit is mostly recycled bits of earlier exploits. The Gitvo bug needs some new techniques. The trigger is here. And then there is a link to chromium.org. If you're in the iOS exploit dev, take a go at it and blog about it. I'll publish what I have soon, hopefully this week. Finally, always keep your personal iOS devices up to date and only use these tools on devices which don't have any personal information and are only used for research. And then he finishes night of tweets by saying this footnote for the VFS bug. Technically, you can control a handful of bits in the eight overflow bytes. The overflow value is actually two four byte flag fields. So yeah, that tweet doesn't really mean much to us, but it means a lot to people like Coolstar and people actually looking into this exploit. So yeah, those are some super interesting finds by Ian Beer. And it's definitely great news. I know it's a lot to digest, but it's definitely great news. And I'm going to try to summarize it a little bit for you guys and make it a lot easier for you guys to understand what's actually going on here. So once again, just to summarize, there were two exploits released by Ian Beer tonight. Both are kernel level exploits for iOS 11.3.1 and below. One of them is a bug in MPTCP, which stands for multipath TCP. And this is the one that requires a paid developer account to compile, not to actually install. So this is not 100% confirmed, but it's about 90% confirmed right now that you don't need a paid developer account to actually run the jailbreak. It's just to actually compile the jailbreak. So the end user will not need a paid developer account. So that should help with a lot of you guys worrying about that being the case with this jailbreak. And once again, this is the same bug that was already publicized in the past and already exploited in the past as well. And the second exploit, of course, is the one in VFS. And this is the one that does not require a paid developer account whatsoever, not even to compile, but it is a lot harder to exploit. So yes, both exploits were released, but since VFS is most likely gonna be the bug used in the Electra jailbreak, it's not 100% yet, we really don't know. But if that is the exploit that Coolstar and his team used for Electra, it could take a little bit longer than we expected. But once again, it should not take very long. It should just be days or weeks, not months. And speaking of Coolstar, here's what Coolstar had to say about Ian Beer's tweets. Re Ian's recent release. He has released an exploit for MPTCP, requires a dev account and a bug that requires an exploit to be written for it, doesn't require a developer account. We'll try to get a hold of a dev account to get started, but for release, dev account isn't too great. And before I get spammed with this question even more than I have already, will you need a paid developer account to run this jailbreak in the end? The answer to that is no. I cannot ever see the day where you will need to pay whatsoever in any way, shape or form to have a jailbreak on your device. So with all that being said, if you have not updated to iOS 11.3.1 yet, now is the time to do so. The signing window is still open, but I fully expect that to be closed sometime later this week, if not just tomorrow. And once again, we have no kind of ETA for the iOS 11.3.1 jailbreak. It is going to come from Coolstar and the Electra team, but we just really don't know when that's actually going to be released to the public. Of course, you guys know I will be letting you know when anything else happens with this jailbreak or with these exploits or anything at all in the jailbreak community. You guys know to keep it locked to this channel for the most up-to-date news. And of course, if you guys aren't following me on Twitter, make sure to go ahead and follow me over on Twitter. It's at Brandon Butch. You can find that link down in the description below. I 
I do post about things quicker over there just because it is easier to type it than record a full video about something. But also make sure you guys are subscribed here on YouTube with notifications turned on so you do not miss when that jailbreak actually gets released. I will be one of, if not the first person on YouTube to release a video when that jailbreak does get released. But anyways, guys, if you're hyped for the iOS 11.3.1 jailbreak, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Again, make sure to subscribe so you do not miss any other future updates with this jailbreak. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.